everyone, it's Emily. Welcome back on my channel. Today I'm going to be doing the makeup book tag because it was really, really requested because I do have a beauty channel. If you don't know, I will be linking that down below. It's Beauty with Emily Fox. So today I'm going to be combining my two passions together. What better video to do than that? So I have my mirror, I have my questions, and I have my book on this wall. So if you see me like looking there trying to find an answer, you'll know why. The first question is primer, which I'm gonna actually skip because my skin has been breaking out a lot and I just want to try and keep it under control. But for the question, it's pick a book that left a lasting impression. And I'm gonna go with Station Eleven by Emily St. John Mendel because I'm still thinking about this book and I've read it like last summer and it just sticks with you. If you don't know, this is basically a post-apocalyptic book where you're following multiple people uh, just before, during and after basically a super flu that killed, they never say really a number, but you assume something like 99% of the population. So it was a really fascinating book. It was kind of slow paced, a lot more than you would think because I feel like post-apocalyptic books, usually it's very action packed. Not this one, but it was really like a slow burn book that just sticks with you. I'm still thinking about it. Okay, so foundation, I'm going to be applying the Too Faced Born This Way foundation. And I'm going to use the L'Oreal sponge that they just came out with. It feels like a marshmallow and it's awesome. So I'm going to be applying this while answering the question, which is pick your favorite first book in a series, which I feel like first books are never my favorite in a series. I feel like it's always like the second one. Uh, but one that made me want to continue the series, one that uh, really like surprised me because I could say Harry Potter but I'm trying to avoid saying that because I feel like everyone is going to say that for everything because Harry Potter works for everything. But I think I would go with The Winner's Curse by Mary uh, Rikoski, I can't see from here, but I was so shocked because I always say how much I don't like romance books, it's just not my genre. But this one is kind of a fantasy a very politically intrigued filled type of romance and I loved it so much that I ended up reading it back to back the second and third one which I again rarely do so it was definitely a great first book if you don't know anything about it like I said it's a fantasy book where you're following uh is it she I think she's 17 year old uh, girl who's the daughter of a general and basically in her uh, society they either get married or become soldier and because she's a daughter of a general basically people are expecting her to become a soldier but she doesn't want to do that and then one day she ends up being at the market and she ends up uh, buying a slave and you know you can kind of see where this is going it's a little cheesy at times but Overall, I enjoyed it so much more than I expected, so definitely a great book, but I did prefer the second book in that series, but it was a really great first book. Next concealer, uh, the question is, pick a character you wish you could get rid of, which is probably one of those questions that I won't know what to answer. Actually, let me show you concealers, which I have the face concealer, under eye concealer. I'm going to start under my eyes. This is the Makeup Forever uh, Ultra HD concealer. I have two colors. You don't need two colors. It's just that one of them is more for uh, correcting, the other one more concealing. One of them is enough. It's super full coverage, but it doesn't look cakey under the eyes. And where am I doing? Like, <laughs> I'm doing a tutorial right now, which is okay. I'm like mixing both channel in one. So yeah, if you're looking for a full coverage uh, concealer for under your eyes, recommend this one. But for the characters I want to remove from a book, to be honest, the reason I'm not doing those type of like tags right now, like doing like, oh, my favorite fantasy book, my favorite this book, my favorite like this or that, is because I haven't been reading enough because of school. Obviously, I'm like finishing uh, university this year, this semester actually. So I haven't been able to read as much as I would have liked. I just started again and I'm loving it, but I feel like I can't answer a lot of those type of like tags because of that. I will definitely do them in the future. I'm using the other color, by the way. I definitely will be doing them in the future, but right now I just feel like I can't answer them. But I will definitely do a video about like characters that I hate the most. Because I'm guessing if you want to get rid of it, the character is annoying. And I feel like the most evil classic that everyone knows would be in Harry Potter. And right there, we already know where I'm going. And it would be Umbridge because she's like the definition of evil to me. Like at least Voldemort knows he's not a nice guy, but like I hate when people think they are like the good people, but actually they're the ass and you're like, I just want to punch you in the throat with a chainsaw. That was actually very violent. But like, you know what I mean? Like the type of people that think they're doing the good thing, but it's like, no, you're not. Those are the characters I hate. But yeah, I can definitely do a full video about those characters because some of them are very annoying. But other than that, I can't think of a book that I've read 
within the last year that I really want a character to just disappear from the book. Face concealer, again, Makeup Forever, but this one is the full cover uh, concealer. If you're looking for a face concealer, that will be waterproof. It stays all day. It doesn't look cakey. doesn't dry out your skin. This is just the best thing ever. It's full coverage. It hides every single imperfection you can have. So whenever I feel like, oh my god, I have a pimple, and everybody's gonna see it, and it's just annoying as hell, this just covers everything. Like, I still have a little pimple, and this one is actually pretty, like, medium coverage. And I'll just use this, and it's gonna be completely gone. And it's like, hey, perfect skin. Can you see this? <laughs> no more pimple. Powder, uh, pick your favorite last book in a series. So for my powder, I'm gonna use the Cover Effects. This is the matte setting powder, and my skin has been super oily, so this keeps it under control. I'm gonna apply it with the e.l.f. powder brush because it's cheap and it's awesome. So the question was the last book. Oh yeah, I just finished the last book in the first trilogy, the first Mistborn trilogy, and <laughs> honestly, if you haven't read these books, if you like fantasy, even if you don't like fantasy, give it a go. The first book, I feel like the first half is kind of slow, but the last book, I feel like you know when the book, like, everything ties in so well at the end and you're like, whoa, I just didn't see all these things coming. Like, very often I feel like there's questions that are unanswered and you're like, oh, it's so annoying. Especially if you know that, oh, they're actually doing another spin-off series off of it. That's why they didn't tell you everything. Not there. Like, literally there's one thing that isn't fully answered, but that just makes sense. Everything else is so well explained. Everything starts making sense and not everything is, like, so black and white as you would think. And I don't know, I really, really liked it. I didn't like everything about the ending. If you have read it, you probably already know what I mean by that. But I really liked how everything made sense. So yeah, that was definitely my favorite last book. Because again, I'm trying not to say Harry Potter because Harry Potter obviously would work for basically every single one of those questions. But yeah, the last book in the Mistborn trilogy, which was... Uh, the Hero of Ages. I just finished it, I should know. But yeah, that book was awesome. I really don't know what to answer that one, so I'm just gonna go with the answer that pops in my mind right now that is in Harry Potter. And I'm sure that afterwards when I edit this video, I'll be like, why did you not mention this book that was like so obvious? Right now it's not, so let's do my eyebrows. So eyebrows, I'm gonna use the Anastasia Beverly Hills Brow Wiz. I am using the color uh, Granite it's a cool tone brown and if you don't know anything this is the product I would recommend for your brows because it's so easy to use like you can't make a mistake it is expensive so if you're more on a budget I would go with the uh, NYX micro brow pencil they're very very similar this one is a little bit better but on a budget the NYX one will do the same thing okay so the question I was saying was <laughs> the book that I think everyone should read I thought about, okay, for a second I forgot it again. Uh, I think I would go, maybe not everyone, I feel like a lot of people will not like it, but I feel like more people should give it a shot, and it would be The Library at Mont Monchar by, who was it already? Scott Hawkins, which, this is the weirdest book I have read last year, I'm pretty sure. But at the same time, I enjoyed it so much, I legit can't do my brows while talking, so I'm gonna do it one at a time. It was the weirdest book I've ever read. Eh. It was one of the weirdest books I've ever read, and it was a mix of so many different genres. It was like thriller-ish, it was horror, fantasy, weird, but I overall enjoyed it. It wasn't like, oh my god, 10 out of 10, everyone needs to read it, which is the question, but whatever. But I feel like a lot of people need to give it a shot because it was so much more interesting than I thought. I will try to describe it, but it's really hard, and like you need to read the first third before it really starts because you're following different stories that make absolutely no sense, they have like no link. And then eventually everything starts happening and you're like, oh. So there's kind of a like ex-military guy that is kind of part of the thriller part. There's a part where you're following multiple kids that are under like their father, which is like basically a god and they're learning like magical powers. The main character being a girl that learns about like all the languages that ever existed. So like thousands. And then there's a part where you're following, are you following the lions from their point of view or is it just about them? Anyway, it's really, really strange, but I enjoyed it so much more than I expected. And like, I was starting it and I was like, yeah, I'm forcing myself to read one chapter a day and then, you know, just to say that I'm trying. And then you just finish the other half in like a day or two, so worth it. And I think a lot of people should give it a shot. I think you should. If you like fantasy, keep an open mind. It's good. Now to browse. <laughs> Oh.
And then I'm going to set them in place slash continue to fill them in with the uh, Benefit Gimme Brow. If you're really lazy with your brows and you just want to like put some gel in there and then add a bit of color and make them look like they're fuller without actually having to do any of the work. This is awesome. On a lazy day, that's exactly what I use in the morning. Or I'll use this and then fill them just a little bit afterwards whenever I need it. Because this is awesome. Okay, eyeshadow. I'm going to use the Lorac Pro Palette because I'm really lazy today and this is my lazy look. And I'm going to use the color mauve in my crease because it's the best crease color ever. So that limits it. And for the favorite color, I don't own any book that has the exact shade that I love, but there's like second color as a tie type of color. I'm gonna go with Dark Matter by Blake Crouch. And if you haven't read this book and you like thriller, uh, well, yeah, thriller sci-fi book, you need to read this book. The, tr the cover is awesome. I will include the picture so you can see it. It's like a really, really bright coral color and it's kind of trippy a little bit but I really recommend that book. I've been recommending it to so many people and actually a lot of you were commenting that you actually read it and loved it, which, which is awesome. I totally uh, recommend it and the color is great. And another one, I actually haven't read that book, but uh, Outlander, which again, I'll include a picture by uh, Diana Gabaldon. That blue color is so pretty. I just really, really like that uh, type of royal blue. Definitely a favorite color, but my favorite color is like periwinkle blue, which I don't own. I don't, own, <laughs> I don't own any book that is that exact shade, so yeah, those are close second, but yeah. Does that make you buy books when they have the your favorite color on top? Because I'm realizing by looking at my like rainbow-ish shelf that a lot of the books that I buy are blue if they have color. Otherwise, I'm really into fantasy and I feel like so many covers slash spine are just black, which... I guess it's fine, but I mean, it's not super exciting or anything, but I'm just going to add a little bit of cream all over my lid just to pretend that I actually did my makeup. Eyeliner. Pick a dark and mysterious book, which again, nobody can actually even just do their eyeliner on camera, let alone while talking. So it's actually one of the things that made me laugh whenever I was watching those videos is because whenever you're doing beauty videos, you know that it's really a pain in the butt to do your makeup and stay in frame and focus and everything and like try and see yourself in the mirror. That's why like you can see my mirror, but like seriously, I can't not see myself. So it's actually been funny to see like normal people struggle too because I feel like YouTubers always look like they can do everything super easily, but we just edit the video. So eyeliner, I'm gonna use the Clinique. This is the um, pretty easy liquid eyeliner pen and I'm using this one because they say easy and it is. So of course, as I was saying this, my uh, card, memory card got full. So I'm using the pretty easy liner because it's super easy to use. Every time I use it, my eyeliner looks good. So if you're looking for a great eyeliner that is really black, that doesn't budge. It doesn't say that it's waterproof, but I would say water resistant for sure. And I've never had an issue with this moving on my face. So yeah, it's great. Dark book. I'm going to do my eyeliner when I'm not talking, but dark book that I recommend everyone to read. I think I would go with Bird Box, which... I didn't give it a like 5 out of 5. I like, feel like a lot of people were giving it like such a high rating and I gave it I think 3.5 but it's a really dark creepy book that I do recommend people reading. It was just such a great idea and I loved parts of it but it was slow paced and there was like a few things that annoyed me but basically it's a post-apocalyptic uh, story where something happens to people and whenever they see that thing they just start going crazy they kill the people then kill themselves everything's always very like gory and just scary so people end up uh, staying home and like hiding their windows and like putting sheets and stuff over top but every time people look outside they start going crazy so you're following that uh, a main character who talks about her past whatever happens when that happened and then she currently has two kids and she's trying to go somewhere to just try and find other survivors basically and yeah, it was just super scary, the whole like, don't look outside. And if you go outside, you have to like hide your eyes and be careful. And like, I don't know, the whole thing was really creepy, but not perfect, but definitely a very creepy book. And if you like those type of books, this is the one that I would recommend you reading because shit was weird. I went way bolder than I intended. We're just gonna rock it. So next mascara, the question is, pick a long book. And 
lengthwise, the longest one that I've read was The Mistborn, the last book of the trilogy. But one that felt long? Oh, okay. Shade time. I know I'm gonna get hate because I did get some whenever I talked about that during my least favorite book of 2016, but Fangirl felt so freaking long, like why 400 something pages? Like that was painful. I didn't enjoy it. Like I really, really wanted to love it as much as everybody did. And every time I talk about it, people get super mad. Like, oh, well, you're just probably just too old to read YA. And it's like, calm down. People have different tastes. It doesn't mean that just because I didn't like it that uh, you can't like it. But I mean, it was long. It was. I didn't mention it. I'm using the uh, Benefit Roller Lash Mascara, which I really, really like. There's no bronzer in this tag, which I'm gonna use the Too Faced Chocolate Milk bronzer because if you have fair skin, I definitely recommend this one. It's light enough and it won't look orange on you. But I don't know why they skipped that question. I don't know what that question would be. Something that warms you up, the perfect book for the summer. Do you change actually your uh, genre during the summer? I feel like I read still fantasy, but I'll start reading more like contemporary or like historical fiction or anything. I feel like I definitely change. I can definitely see like a change in my reading taste during the summer. Blush pick a book that has some cringe-worthy romance. So blush I'm gonna use Tarte Expose. If you're someone that doesn't like to apply blush, you just always skip blush this blush. This is gonna be the only blush you're gonna need. You're not gonna need anything else. You're not gonna want to buy anything else. This matches with any crazy look, any normal look, any I'm not really wearing makeup or am I type of look. So yeah, if you're lazy and you just want something, whenever I just don't know what to wear, I just wear this one because it's really easy. You can't go wrong. It's matte. It's pigmented, but it's not too pigmented. So yeah, it's very easy to use. But cringeworthy romance. I don't like romance because I don't like cringeworthy romance and I feel like everything is cringeworthy for me like everything like I, I will see people like for example everyone liked everything everything I didn't like it because not realistic for two seconds if you're allergic to everything you're not gonna like mess up your whole life because there's a cute boy next door like just doesn't make sense no or um I feel like the winner's curse that I did like was a little cringeworthy sometimes or oh, more shade. I feel like I'm gonna get so much hate. Mortal Instruments. Like the spoiler at the end of the first book. I guess it's not really cringeworthy romance, but I'm still mentioning this because I'm still like... I've only read the second book too. I haven't finished the third one. I'm still just waiting for the spoiler to be proven wrong because I just know it's not true, but like... Yeah. <laughs> okay, went on a tangent there, but yeah, great blush. <laughs> Next highlighter, uh, a book that brightened your day. Best highlighter I have ever tried if I could only have one highlighter and also the most expensive highlighter that I own, the Laura Mercier Matte Radiance Bake Powder in 01. This is the most natural glow from within highlighter. I feel like, especially on the internet, everyone is like the most shimmery, most glittery, Disco ball -y highlighter is the best, which, you know, there's some places where it's appropriate and you can just rock it and it looks great on camera and picture and stuff, but sometimes in person, outside, or at work, you just can't have that gold stripe on your face. So this is what I recommend for this. And I'm just gonna grab the brush. Do I have a brush? Yeah. So this is just the best one. It's super, super natural. I get so many compliments every time, like even with the camera. I'm sure with the light right now, you can still see that it's like super intense glowy but in real life nobody will see like glitter or anything on my face it's definitely still very very natural very glowy very pretty i get always compliments every single day whenever i wear this so definitely the one that i would just keep and hoard and recommend last but not least lipstick uh your favorite book kiss which since again i don't really love romance uh, I'm gonna start with lipstick actually. Let me grab. For the lipstick, I'm gonna use the uh, Milani Matte Naked Lipstick. If I could only have one, I don't know actually. <laughs> Not true. 
I can't choose one nude lipstick, but definitely one of like top five lipstick that is nude. If you have like a cooler tone and every like brown your lipstick looks straight up brown and disgusting on you, this is the one I would recommend because there's just enough brown that it looks like it's brown, but there's enough mauve in there that it's not straight up brown on you. And if you have a warmer undertone, it will definitely look a little bit more purpley. But it's pretty and it's matte and it smells like vanilla and it's like amazing quality for the price. So definitely recommend this one. And for the kiss, uh, okay, it's kind of spoilery, so I'm not going to mention who. But I'm going to say uh, the second book in the uh, V. Schwab like latest series, the book being A Gathering of Shadows, there was a kiss in there that I was like, aha! I felt like I kind of saw it coming, but not really, and I was still shocked, and I was like really happy. If you don't like romance, you like always think it's cringeworthy, and you just don't like it, I recommend V.E. Schwab's book, because there was like romance-ish, interest-ish, but it's never the main like idea of the book, and literally it lasts like a page or two, and that's it, and that kiss was in one of those things, and I was like, so yeah, if you have read it, you know what I mean. <laughs> So this is the final makeup look, pretty simple, and I answered all the questions. So if there's any other uh, tags you would like me to do, please feel free to leave them down below. Also feel free to answer the questions in the comments or just discuss any of my answers because it's always the best part in a video, it's the comments, just being able to talk about it all. And yeah, I hope my answers were okay and I'm not going to change my mind while I'm editing, but... So that's it guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video, don't forget to give it a big thumbs up and to subscribe and not miss any future ones and I will see you in my next one. Bye!